Joining me now is Bruce Lavelle, Executive Director for the National Diversity Coalition for Trump. <laughs> Mr. Lavelle, I'm so, so, so happy you joined me today. Um, listen, since you lead the Diversity Coalition, I, I kind of want to start there. So uh, as the leader of this Diversity Coalition, I have to ask, as a member of the community, and I'm sure on behalf of many other people of color, uh, I could go through a list of, of Trump's remarks and, and some of his greatest hits, but I'll just start with the, the most recent. Um, he is insisting that people who are advocating for a racial reckoning in this country that's long overdue, that those people hate the country. Um, he's threatening to send officers to cities. He wants undocumented immigrants to be excluded from census numbers. Uh, which, of course, decide how many seats they have in Congress. On June 28th, the president actually retweeted a video of some of his supporters shouting white power. I have to ask you, why would anybody in the community or people who don't uh, support white supremacy, why would they listen to you carrying this president's water? You have the floor. Explain it to us. Good morning to you, Tiffany, on the long list. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Well, listen, it, you know, a lot of chatter on Twitter, a lot of opinions floating around out there. To me, it's all noise. I look at numbers. We're numbers. Uh, the president, uh, we came out of the lowest black unemployment in the history of the United States uh, ever, recorded my lifetime in 72. Uh, the president's been key on funding HBCU colleges for up to 10 years, which, Tiffany, it's going to help your beautiful college here at Clark, where you attended, and many of my other friends who went to Morehouse and et cetera. So that's a great plus. And, you know, this uh, step one, uh, act, uh, Tiffany, where he signed into law and this, you know, what you know, Biden put into effect, which is the authored the crime bill that Clinton signed that put a total mass incarceration towards our black men. Okay. And so he unraveled that. So, you know, I think, you know, respectfully, there's so much noise out there. At the end of the day, the president's record speaks for itself. Um, I, the, pre the people are not going to have amnesia from a few months ago <laughs> of where we were in the economy. It's the fastest uptick in small black business owners in the last few years. Uh, that I've seen. I'm a black business owner here for 28 years in Atlanta, and a yeah. lot of my friends who have, who've started their businesses in the Trump administration have great uh, you okay, know, access well, to capital, let me, let me low just... interest rates. So, you know, I, I think respectfully, Tiffany, you know, noise, 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 numbers don't lie. Noise, 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 the coming from the president, though. speaks for itself. Yeah, in terms I agree. Of so let's get into the president's record. You said it speaks for itself. So let's start with unemployment, because this is a statistic he loves to tout. The African unemployed or African American unemployment rate right now reached 16.8% in May this year, the highest since March 2010. Now, I will acknowledge prior to the the corona crisis, there had been a consistent downward trend that actually began under President Barack Obama, which I'm sure you know. Uh, and Obama saw the rate decline from 12.6 percent to 7.5 percent during his terms uh, in office from 2009 to 2017. So I just want to be clear on, on the facts there. And you're saying noise and that people won't have amnesia, but a lot of this noise is coming directly from the president. So I appreciate what you shared, but you didn't really address yeah. some of the things that the president himself has done. Look, a lot of people of color and a lot of American citizens are tuning into this program right now. This is your chance to make a sound argument uh, on why they should listen to you and support a president who has failed on a lot of levels. I don't think that people will have a short-term memory. I know you credit him well, with the first step back. That was actually introduced in Congress uh, by Congressman Hakeem Jeffries and uh, Doug Collins, one of the Trump acolytes in Congress. And it's called the first step Act because a second and third step needs to happen. We still have a very unforgiving, uh, unforgiving criminal justice system, which this president seems to want to perpetuate by sending secret police snatching protesters off the street without probable cause. So again, why should people look at somebody who looks like our skin folk, uh, but is carrying the message from somebody who's perpetuating a system of white supremacy? And I ask that with all sincerity, I, sir. I really am curious and, about and, how that and happens. I, and I and I all sincerity say that's a lie. I know the president. Uh, how? He's how not, is it a lie? He doesn't condone that. He doesn't Tiffany. condone what? He, uh, the line, the, list of, the list of items he tried to go over. You know, listen, you can't. Barack Obama is not the president. You know, when Barack Obama, he had eight years with Joe Biden 
to do something about our mass incarceration. So let me just say, Mr. Lavelle, let me just, let me just quickly about, answer and, and just say, let me just say I, really quickly, I, I when you do finished, that, because I, I want to make sure, I know, I just, before I, you answer, I just want to say, when no, you deflect no, to Joe Biden and Obama, it sounds like you don't want to address brought, the record if, of the president who's Biden, in house right now. Up. Barack Obama. You brought him up. Yeah, so just I'm to fact check your, your unemployment numbers. And when you deflect to that, no, I think Obama's our viewers think you don't want to answer the question. So if you could Donald just J. answer Trump the question about the president as, you're here to advocate for. As as bad as as, as as bad as it hurts the left that the president has great accomplishments helping the black community, opportunity zones, I can count several black businesses that benefited on the opportunity zones that are doing partnerships, building restaurants building retail shops here in the opportunity zones that the president signed into order that helps underserved communities of hundreds of billions of dollars coming into these underserved communities, Tiffany. So, I think a lot you know, of these underserved we, communities are concerned, though, about um, children uh, in cages, and they're concerned about secret police snatching protesters. They're concerned about a president who retweets white power videos. So again, can you just address your president's uh, record on racism, on, on the racist rhetoric and policies that he's instituted in this administration? People of color are watching right now. We're in a moment of racial <laughs> reckoning. He and, says these are people just, who hate the country. Jeffrey, but, you lead a Jeffrey, diversity coalition, but you're here Jeffrey, repeating GOP talking points. Talk to me. Talk to talk. the community. They're facts, Tiffany. <laughs> and, and they're facts. And, and for the record, well, Barack Obama, they, he, he started well, the cages. Well, we're back on Obama, here. and I really want you to talk talk about Trump. So if you can well, just you know, if it, stop bringing up Obama, then we won't have to keep addressing it, Tiffany. We want to talk about Trump. Let's talk about Trump. We'll talk about Obama. Let's talk about Obama. But you're not going to sit up here on national TV and go down the list and don't give me an opportunity to address these issues, Tip. So let's okay. let's be let's let's keep it real here. <laughs> okay, just let's, let's by all real. means, let's keep it real. So if you could, uh, let me ask you this, because uh, you lead this diversity coalition, and I've, I've found in, in my career there are a lot of people who lead diversity initiatives, and some people find that role uh, to be, uh, you know, you advocate for your candidate within these communities. I'm curious, do you ever advocate on behalf of black and brown communities with this president? And if so, what does that look like, and what are you advocating for? Well, let's put it this way. For many years, I'm a lifetime Republican. I've lived in Atlanta for over 35 years. We've used, we've, we've picked the same old candidates as usual, the same old folks. We finally got a president that came in here that understands business, that challenged the inner cities and the communities across the country. What do you have to lose? He put the money where the mouth was in terms of hundreds of billions of dollars in these underserved communities. He went d directly after the HBCUs and funded them for over 10 years. He went right after us being oil dependency where we're number one oil producers in the world where a lot of our black engineers that come out of Morehouse and our great HBCUs work in these oil companies that created even more jobs in the engineering and science department. Uh -huh. Tiffany, the list goes on. The criminal justice. Biden has yet to apologize. Well, we're for not talking about Biden. I really like want you. Me. And he trust me, I, I will ask the Biden representative for, all these questions about Biden. Yeah, again, years. trust me, when we have a Biden representative on, I'd be happy to talk all about Biden. But right here, you're uh, here to represent Trump. So let me ask you this, because this is something I think is really important. We had Malcolm Nance on earlier, and it's been confirmed that Russia is definitely trying to uh, impact our elections. In oh, 2016, here um, yeah, here we go. Let's stick with some facts and keep go. it real, let's, as you say. So in song. 2016, uh, Trump's campaign tactics mirrored that of the Russians. And the own, your, somebody from your own, uh, the Trump campaign said, they told a Bloomberg reporter in 2016 that they had three major voter suppression operations underway, including one aimed at depressing the black voter turnout. How concerned are you that Trump might be using you to carry out this voter suppression by making this feigned appeal to reach voters of color? And what exactly does that outreach look like? I'm in the community and I haven't really seen well, a lot of it. I happen to know a lot about voter suppression, Tiffany. I'm glad you, I'm glad in you Georgia, brought it up. where Brian Kemp is a very active hey, proponent voter, of it, so I imagine suppression, so. Voter suppression is when people who look like me look at another side of the aisle and vote Republican or something that has nothing to do with the Democrat Party. Okay, and then Bruce, get come on. Now you know, we know what I'm talking about when no, I say no, voter, no, no, voter no. suppression. That's voter suppression. You want to That's keep it real, suppression. my brother. Let's talk about real voter suppression. <laughs> you, Let's not do know. that. I'm talking about GOP-led voter suppression, and I can give you numerous examples if you like, but I'm giving you an opportunity to say how this president, who has his own campaign officials, have admitted that they have had a voter suppression operation to suppress black voters. 
U.S. Yeah, intelligence what, what agencies have confirmed that Russia is trying to stoke disinformation campaigns right here in America. You are here advocating on behalf of this president. Your response to voter suppression cannot truly be something that's partisan. Certainly, you are an advocate and proponent of democracy. Well, what do you have to say about this campaign I, potentially suppressing people who look like you in a state where I grew up and a state where you live now? Uh, suppressing, I just went down the list and proved that suppressing that we had the lowest black unemployment in my lifetime. What does Tiffany. that have to suppressing do with voter suppression? We, we funded our HBCU. I, I don't get where this is going, but let's, let, but all seriousness, the Russians have no business in the Democrat Party, the Republican Party, any of our republic. The Chinese, any of us, they have no business whatsoever. Agreed. Period. Does, does your, does your president feel the same way, the, do you think? The, the reason why President Trump is going to win again is because of his record and where we are going in the future with this great nation. Now, I know that everyone's nervous because we're trending getting more black men vote on board that are following this president's great initiatives that were going into 2020, and we're getting an all-out assault with all these conspiracy theories. We've thrown Russia. We've thrown the voter suppression. We're throwing everything okay. we can on at the wall to make it stick. Yeah. But Tiffany, it won't well, work. All right. I think if you're fact averse, I, you probably believe that. But let me let me switch gears because something very serious, and that's 146,000 dead Americans. Donald Trump has said this virus is just going to disappear uh, in hot weather. He initially called it a hoax. Uh, his administration has gone out of their way to discredit Dr. Fauci. In fact, uh, Sinclair Broadcast Group, the very conservative group buying up a lot of local television stations, are saying to air a conspiracy theory over the weekend that suggests Dr. Fauci invented the virus. Um, given that this kind of rhetoric is coming from your side of the aisle and given that this virus disproportionately impacts people who look like you and me, how do you feel about the president's response and, and what can he do better? Keeping in mind that a lot of people who have been impacted by this virus are watching right now. So I would just remind you to be sensitive about people who have lost family, um, who have, are the survivors of the 146,000 Americans who have died. Well, you know, I, I caution you to be sensitive on how you're delivering the message, Tiffany. Let's let's be fair across the board. Number one, we have 51 million. I'm just relaying uh, facts, sir. But please. Well, I'm I'm relaying facts too. We we tested 51 million people. There's 328 million American citizens in the United States. We're number one in the world in testing. We have a vaccine around the corner that's probably due around December. And number one, thank God the president shut down the country and saved millions of lives on his leadership in January, or we would have a catastrophe. So, you know, I, I, I think that runs flat. I think we've done a great job. And the Fauci uh, uh, president, that they, they, he just complimented him yesterday in the press conference. I know, they we haven't heard along. from him, though. He's, he's sidelined him. Shut down. We, we haven't really People heard from his, his administration has been doing oppo research on it. So that's kind of strange Fauci. that he's complimenting him while Peter Navarro is well, no, writing no. op-eds and, gonna, and saying bad things about him. You're not going to sit here and try to make like there's chaos going on between the uh, president and Dr. I'm Fauci. I'm going to sit here and report facts and try to get some straight talk from you. And you say we're number one in the world, but let me just say, okay, I hear you. Let me just say, um, right now, the, right now, the U.S. has an uncontrolled outbreak. Um, we're reporting more than 50,000 new cases a day. Just give me some, uh, let me give you some context for comparison. Smaller countries like Germany and Japan are reporting hundreds of new cases a day. Again, we're reporting 50,000 new cases a day. You can't sit here and expect the American people to believe that you believe that this president has handled this virus well. Is there anything that you think Donald Trump could have done differently? And if so, what is that? I think he did. I think we've all, we as a as a country, have done a tremendous job. So you think 146,000 dead Americans we, was an appropriate we, response we from this? We as a country, we as a country, we, we as a country, as a country I, yes. But I'm asking about Donald we, Trump and the president, the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, and we as the country, Tiffany, have done a marvelous job and a wonderful job combating this China virus that has taken over our economy. So I just that, want to correct is, you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know. lead the Diversity Coalition, and you're you're calling, you're using uh, these racist terms like it, the China it virus. Came from China. COVID-19. It, 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 yes. it came from China. Yes, but That's I, where it came from. Yeah, but I would no sooner say that you from. had the MAGA virus than I would call this the China virus. No. That's ridiculous, well, and you know I, that. I and what, somebody leading a Diversity back. Coalition that's so, clearly offensive well, Jim, to the Asian-American members of this community 
community, it seems like an easy thing to not do that Where's as the, the head of the diversity come? coalition. Seems Where like an easy did thing. The virus come from? Where did the virus come from? Wait, I'm sorry? Where did the virus come from? Uh, look, I think MSNBC has a lot China. of people in rotation to host this show. When you get in rotation, you can ask the questions, but right now I'm asking them, and I'm saying well, a lot of people well, in the Asian American community, and myself included, find that term offensive. Why not call it COVID-19 what scientists call it? And that's really beside the point. I don't want to get sidetracked. The point is there are 146,000 dead Americans. This We're seeing 50,000 new cases a day, and you have gone on record by saying you think the president has done a good job, and you don't think there's anything different he can do. Um, so you think that's funny? I, I think you're laughing. I, well, I, you, to, laugh. you know, to keep you, from you crying, sir. I, I, well, I, I, I find it preposterous that we can't have a factual discussion, that we can't have an intellectual exchange. And I wonder, let me ask you, has Donald, let me, because I'm curious. So this is, this is my last question because we're running out of time. But I am curious because when I see folks like you um, support this president, has Donald Trump ever promised you anything financially in exchange for your blind support? Um, of this administration or helping his campaign. On the record, can you tell us if he's ever promised you anything financially or otherwise? No, and I've known him since 2015. I know what he has promised. He promised that he wanted to get the black unemployment low, get it down. He wanted to create jobs. He wanted to bring back and resurrect generational wealth in black communities where people like me who How's own that going? our own business. The black unemployment me, rate, as I mentioned, me, was 16.8 percent. So how's that going so you, far? I'm trying to answer the question. Sorry, please go ahead. He, want, he wanted to resurrect black generational wealth, create more jobs, more business, business owners like me, uh -huh. 30.6 million small businesses in the country. We represent 42 percent of the GDP. I just said earlier in the segment, we have the fastest rate of minority-owned businesses growing in this administration in the history of the United States. We own the retail commodities. We build the retail commodities. That's what the Opportunity Zones are for. That's why the Step 1 Act to get our black men back out with their wives, get back um, to their families. The first, yeah, the, the First so Step Act. We, you know, interesting we, thing, black women are actually uh, the number one uh, business owners when it comes to communities of color. What does his outreach to black women look like, or, or does that exist? Or does the Diversity Coalition have any outreach plans to I, the black communities uh, as it well, relates to black know, women? I, I think the president needs to keep doing what they're doing, and the records don't lie, and the numbers don't lie. And the numbers we're, don't we're, lie. 146,000 dead Americans had, and 16.8% unemployment rate among been, black people. Had we not been interrupted with the COVID-19 China virus, we would probably be at a 1.5% Un low unemployment. We would have even right. more growth of black business. So um, listen, watch the third quarter GDP. We'll get out of this. We're going to be stronger. We're going to be better. We're going to see more and more people like me who own and build businesses. And it's going to be under this Trump administration. It okay. won't be under the Joe Biden administration. All that's right. for sure. Yeah. Well, Bruce, look, I'll say I'm happy you came on. I think uh, what you said has certainly been telling for the American people and certainly for the voters watching you right now. So I do appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much for joining me. Unfortunately, we're out of time. More AM Joy after the break.